This is the future. Hello everyone and welcome back to another Warframe video. In today's guide I will show you what I think to be the most important mods that every Warframe players must have in 2024. If you're new to Warframe then you might want to watch the video from start to finish as there are hundreds of mods available right now in Warframe but only a few of them are good in real missions. Also, I will include non-meta mods in this video so that veteran players can try something new in their build. So I think I have explained what you'll be seeing in this video and now let's begin with the basics, the starter or what I call newbie mods. Right off the bat you should consider having Vitality, Redirection, Intensify, streamline stretch and auger mods to help you progress in the game smoothly. Vitality is obviously for more health, but right now redirection mod is a good contender since it becomes better with the additional damage reduction on the shield plus the shield gating mechanic that gives you more invulnerability after shield break if you have high shield values. The only downside about this is that early levels it's harder to regenerate your shield with no access to the helmet system. The intensify mod will increase your power strength giving more power to your abilities and this pairs well with auger secrets at early levels. Then stretch plus auger reach would give your starter warframe abilities a decent range to either kill kill enemies with their nuke attacks or crowd control the enemies within the vicinity. The best part is that most of these mods can be used for steel path builds except for redirection and intensify as these mods have better variants. Another good thing about these mods is you can farm them early in your first Warframe playthrough. These mods are farmable in the planes of Eidolon open world content, more specifically the bounty missions which you unlock after doing the planes of Eidolon quests. For new players, the best start for you is to at least make your way through the planes of Eidolon content and unlock the bounty missions. In normal cases, you can get to this level in the game after spending two hours running the first quest, looking at some stuff in the game, and progressing until you unlock the open world and earth. The stretch, vitality, redirection, intensify, and as well as streamline mods can be rewarded in stage 2 or the final stage of the level 5 to 15 bounty in Cetus. Take note that rewards are on a rotational basis, so you might have to wait for these mods to be available in the level 5 to 15 bounties. For the auger mods, you will need to do the level 30 to 50 bounty mission. Now, aside from Warframe mods, you also get weapon mods in the level 5 to 15 Cetus bounty mission early. You can get a pressure point to boost your melee damage the Hornet Strike mod to boost the damage of your secondaries and point blank mod for your shotguns. The best part is, once you finish the Saya's Vigil quest, you now have access to the level 5 to 15 bounty and you can start farming the aforementioned mods. The Augur mods though are locked at mastery rank 5 as this is the requirement to do the level 30 to 50 bounty missions in the Plains of Eidolon. Another important mod that you should have is Serration, Point Strike and Vital Sense. These are crucial for your primary weapon builds at early levels of the game. Point Strike can be obtained on the level 10 to 30 Cetus bounty mission, while both Serration and Vital Sense can be farmed while praying to RNG that it will drop while progressing through the star chart missions. The list of missions wherein these mods are rewarded can be seen in the link which you can check out in the video description below. Also try to get the vacuum mod as early as possible. Vacuum is a sentinel mod that pulls in pickups, ammo, and mods toward the warframe from farther away. Long story short, it lets you pick up all the loot and not miss one. Vacuum does not drop from any enemy and is not obtainable from any mission. Instead you will be given one copy every time you claim a sentinel from your foundry. One thing that I always suggest to new players is joining a clan with complete research as there are weapons and warframes in the clan that are available for research and you can use them to progress to the game easily. I say this because there are two options to get sentinels early in the game and that is buying some of them from the in-game market or get some of them from the clan dojo. But remember though, stuff in warframe has building cost and time gating. Always expect that if you get something fancy, then you have to look for the materials to craft it in your foundry and wait for hours before you can actually start using it. Now, I am recruiting clan members in my Discord channel, but I had made a halt accepting invites at the moment since I'm looking for more people to manage my clan. It's really hard to have a real life and be an active clan leader all the time. I will just make the announcement when will I resume clan invites in my Discord channel so if you want to join just simply visit our Discord server for some updates. The next best mod for progression is kind of tricky as you need to farm it in these tier 3 missions. As you might guess the only mod missing from the Warframe loadout is an energy mod which you can get from tier 3 exc free excavation, survival, or in the Duviri circuit mission. The flow mod will allow you to have enough energy to cast your abilities but in the early stages of the game you are low in mod capacity and you would need to put a potato in your Warframe or might as well form at once to have all these mods in your character. Luckily, there's a way to somehow increase your mod capacity through aura mods, and one can be farmed easily during your early progression. Digital Extremes added a new starter mod for players, and this is called Dreamer's Bond, an aura mod that regenerates the health and energy pools of a given squad. This is by far one of the best mods for progression until you get those aura mods meant for maxing out your Warframe builds. This is awarded from completing the Earth to Venus Junction, by the way, so you can get it before the Rhino farm, which is one of the best progression Warframe. The Rhino parts are farmed in the 
the jackal boss fight, and the mechanics of this boss fight are quite easy. Just use radiation to destroy the legs and deal huge damage to the boss. The next mods I can recommend are the mods you get from Cephalon Samaris. Just go to any relay that you have previously unlocked and then fast travel to Cephalon Samaris. In the right corner of your screen, you will see a place for offerings, and the best mods you can purchase right here are health conversion and energy conversion. The health conversion is great when it comes to damage reduction builds on your health, but I suggest that you just go with this for optimizing your build since you need equilibrium or the purple Archon Shard to maximize the benefit of this mod, but just purchase it for future use. The energy conversion, however, is your first taste of increased damage potentials or buffs on your Warframe abilities. To get these mods, though, you would need to rack up Samaris standings, which you can get from doing synthesis scanning missions from the Cephalon. Aside from Cephalon Samaris, there is also a vendor in the relay, which is very important for increasing the effectiveness of your Warframes and boosting the firepower of your guns. I am talking about the Room of the Arbiter of Hexus, which is located at the east wing of any relays. In this room, you will find the Arbitration Honors vendor, which sells different mods. The best mods in here are Rolling Guard for more survivability for your Warframe, then Preparation, which is intended for Exilus mod slots, so you will always start at full energy on a mission, making the progression a lot easier. And then there's the Galvanized mods, which are used to make end game gun builds in Warframe. To get these mods, you will need to do Arbitration missions, which is one of the best way to earn Endo while progressing in the early levels in the game. By doing so, you will gain Vitus Essence, which you can use to purchase all the mods that I have mentioned, and also possibly loot the Adaptation mod as a reward in the Arbitration mission, which is one of the best survivability mods in the game. This pairs well with Redirection right now, making your Warframe a big tanky until you reach Steel Path levels. By the way, I nearly forgot about Augment mods. Now, these are known to be Band-Aid mods by the Warframe community, and what they does is alter an ability of a Warframe to make it even powerful or change how the way it works. You can get these Augment mods from your Syndicate standings, which you can easily access in your Orbiter. The Daily Standing Cap is easily achieved right now just by selecting a Syndicate and gaining Affinity while playing the game and killing enemies. This Augments are great for new players because just for example, if you have Volt as your starter Warframe, then you can use the Capacitance Augment to increase his survivability because of the shield per hit restoration that almost lets you completely abuse shield gating mechanic. Also, don't forget to do the Sacrifice quest as it rewards some of the meta mods for min-maxing builds in the game. The Umbral mods, as well as Sacrificial mods, are a must-have for every Warframe player right now. In most cases, Umbral Intensify will always be present in your build, especially if you don't like the negative effect of corrupted mods. While in the melee builds, Sacrificial Steel is very dominant in red crit melee builds, and of course it's always a must to farm corrupted mods once you have access to the Heart of Diamos content. Corrupted mods are a class of rare mods that affect one stat beneficially and another one detrimentally. Those available for Warframes are characterized by extremely high bonuses outweighed by major penalties. Those available for weapons provide bonuses of a similar strength to their standard mod analogs while still also having a penalty. Corrupted mods can be obtained from the Oracle and Derelict Tylus set on DMOs using special dragon keys to unlock Oracle and Vaults located within. They are untransmutable, visually they do not have any special distinguishing mark and appear as any other mod of rare rarity. These mods are essential for optimizing your Warframe and weapon builds, and it's a must-have to have all of them in your inventory. There are 24 collectible corrupted mods in the game, and you can see all of them in the link I have provided in the video description below. For returning players, take note that the developer also added one new corrupted mod, which is meta for some survivability setup in the game. This is called Catalyzing Shield, and what this mod does is let you abuse the shield gating mechanic in a specific Warframe setup. Aside from corrupted mods, another most important mods that you should have are Prime mods. Prime mods are enhanced versions of their original non-Prime counterparts, featuring additional ranks and with it greater bonuses. It is important to note that these mods cannot stack with their standard counterparts, though they can stack with mods that provide the same bonus, but they can stack with constitution or narrow-minded and receive penalties from fleeting expertise. Most prime mods are sold from the Void Trader. Four prime mods are only available as daily tribute rewards, Prime Fury, Prime Vigor, Prime Shred, and Prime Sure-Footed, which is the meta for all builds that hates knockdown effects. Those mods are presented on days 200, 400, 600, and 900. On those days, you can choose one between three different of these four mods, while the rest can either be acquired through buying them with Ducats from the Void Trader or buying them from other players with Platinum. One piece of advice that I can give to new players is to try and get at least Prime mods before you go into Steel Path levels. You will need all the help in making your Warframe survive and kill enemies in Steel Path levels. Better yet, try to also have Galvanized mods to give it to one of your progression guns to somehow easily breeze through Steel Path levels. Another mod class that I should add to the list is Acolyte mods. Acolyte mods are specialized rare mods that used to drop from the Stalker's Acolytes before before update 29 and since then are rewarded from Entrati bounties. Their effects can only be active when some conditions are met during combat, such as requiring headshots, reloads, or kills to activate the bonus, and only for a limited time. They are untransmutable, and the reason why I added this close to the end of the list is that they can easily be farmed in Entrati missions, which are new missions currently in Warframe. This means you have to unlock a lot of content before you can get these mods, or if you have platinum to spend, then just buy them from other players. The most notable mods to get are the melee acolyte mods, namely Blood Rush, Body Count, and Weeping Wounds. Blood Rush will be present in most red crit builds and even in some 
stat stick builds. Weeping Wounds is for those builds in which you need more status chance, but you can't afford to put more dual status chance mods in your build. While the body count is just a personal choice if you can't keep your combo count or don't have the drifting contact mod yet. There are also those mods called dual stat mods in Warframe. Dual stat mods are mods that affect two stats rather than one. Some of these mods affect both those stats beneficially, while others increase one stat in exchange for decreasing the other stat. While they are farmable in the game, it's either waiting for the void trader or taking your luck against a horrible drop chance. Dual stat mods that you use in your guns are a must-have for min-maxing your weapon builds, and I think it should be better if you just buy them from other players. If the void trader will have some of these mods, then buy them with Ducats, but if you really can't wait, then I suggest that you farm for platinum instead and then buy these mods. Honestly, once you are in steel path levels, you have better options of getting platinum fast by doing missions, collecting loot, and selling them from other players. I have tons of platinum guides that you can check out later in the video description below. The good thing is that this is totally free and doesn't require any subscription or pyramid schemes. There are also those elemental mods perfect for those guns that don't have high status chance and all you need to do is build it for raw damage plus critical, then more damage output from elemental mods. Honestly, these mods are not that hard to find and in fact, you will find one or two of them while progressing through the star chart missions in the game. Also, Archon mods are worth mentioning on this should not be a top priority as these mods are only available once you are in the new war quest line. Also, they cost a lot of mod capacity so they are not better all the time when it comes to optimizing builds compared to primed and corrupted mods. You can get these mods from Chipper at the Calls Garrison and the best Archon mod is probably Archon Vitality which offers more bonus DPS to setups such as Thermal Sunder or any abilities that deal heat damage. Then some of the non-meta mods I really enjoy are Arrow Vantage paired with Aerial Damage Reduction mods such as Aerodynamic and Aviator. Arrow Vantage is also great in Riven Challenges that requires 3 headshot kill while aim gliding. It's kind of a bummer though, as you can't farm this mod early in the game, as it's only available in Disruption Missions. The Aerodynamic mod can have a 2% drop chance every rotation A of an Arbitration mission, while Aviator can be farmed from Greenier Nox units. They can be found early and can be paired with Adaptation for more survivability, but Arrow Vantage just makes the whole synergy good. If you have the Platinum, then you can just buy it from other players. Also, Amalgam mods are very good in specific synergies that I really enjoy, especially the Amalgam Ripka's True Steel, which makes you be an effective farming Necros while using your guns. The ability does give Gore Chance, which translates to Dismemberment. Because of this, you don't need to go for slash specific builds to dismember enemy bodies and use a viral, heat, corrosive element combo in your guns to destroy and farm resources. The other Amalgam mods are also good for specific synergies in the game, and some of them even works with Exalted Weapons, such as Mesa's Regulator Pistols. The only problem, though, is that they are hard to farm at early stages stages of the game since you'll be dealing with the Ropolis, which doesn't just require good weapons, but good amp for your operator to take down its shield. And for the final mods, while they are not that important, they are surely fun as hell to have, especially if you roll some good stats in them. I am talking about Riven mods. These mods are special mods for primary weapons, secondary weapons, melee weapons, arch guns, and robotic weapons. They can be acquired from Paladino, a character in Iron Wake who can transmute 10 Riven Sliver into a Veiled Riven mod twice per week. You can also get them from Sorties, Steel Path Offerings, the vendor in your dormy zone, Archon Hunts, and Steel Paths circuit. As I have said, they are not necessary mods, but they add flavor and spice to your weapons, and sometimes you will enjoy a gun with Riven compared to the normal optimal builds. So that's all about it. If I missed something in this video, feel free to share it in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again in my next guide. Squad Leader signing off. This is the future.